All right, good evening to you. I am Ryan Broom with the Thursday, October 5th edition of the CBC Evening News. In our top story. The full effects of the National Social Responsibility Levy will be felt by consumers in a few weeks. This is according to the head of one of the leading distributors on the island. Arlisa Lord spoke to the manage direct, managing director of Atlantic Marketing, Gregory Ward. By the end of this month, Barbadians will see and feel the full impact of the NSRL in the supermarkets. This is according to the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Atlantic Marketing, Gregory Ward. While the levy was increased from 2% to 10%, Mr. Ward says the increase will be much higher by the time it reaches the consumer. Just had to go through and restructure all of our pricing. Uh, all the companies here in Barbados <clears throat> and the increases at the supermarket and to the consumer are between 15 and 18 percent and, and, and I, I don't see how it is physically possible if a man has a hundred dollars he only has a hundred dollars he doesn't have a hundred twenty so that means goods have to come out of that basket and they're not going to be able to carry home what they used to be able to or they will have to buy in smaller sizes Atlantic Marketing has been in the distribution business for the past 32 years. They started distributing pet food but are now mainly into food and beverage. Mr. Ward says those in the distribution business need to be mindful of the consumer and watch their prices. I think in Barbados a lot of distributors here or manufacturers are focusing on markups that are maybe a bit too high. Um, we tend to work on volume. Atlantic Marketing uh, and it has been a great success for us in keeping lower pricing and moving more volume. And he's also calling for a serious relook of the basket of goods. I still see a lot of stuff that should be in that basket of goods that are not in that basket of goods. A simple example is toilet paper. Why is toilet paper not in there? I think somebody brought up already and said well how, how strawberries get in there and not toilet paper? Seriously. That, that is you know, they've got a couple of questions to be asked. Mr. Ward also spoke to us about his experience with transporting much needed supplies to Dominica, which has been devastated by Hurricane Maria. He used his own game fishing vessel to get the supplies there and was among the first set of Barbadians who ventured to the island. He says they made at least two trips and they were overwhelmed by the response of Barbadians and local military personnel. I spoke to our local suppliers here, manufacturers who have companies in Sanusha who donated quite a bit. And then myself and my crew then put together and bought about another 20,000 US dollars in goods and put on the boat to carry up. Um, as well as the Sanusha, the medical side, asked us to carry up more medical stuff, which was through refrigerated uh, tetanus shots, you know, antibiotics, or all cold storage, uh, to, but which were delivered directly to when we were back on the second trip to the port in Roseau, where they had people come and collect them with, with um, ice boxes. Atlantic market in itself, uh, my wife and my, my girls here, uh, we have moved, I, I want to say, close to about six 40-foot containers of, of donated relief from Barbadians. It has been overwhelming, uh, and that's been moved be primarily between the Admiral and the Coast Guard. Uh, while we were there in Dominica, the Coast Guard did an exceptional job. We saw both boats in and out, leave and go to Barbados and come back. We know of people that actually got lifts to Barbados and were shocked that the boat had got back down right away. And uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're doing an amazing job. The BDF is really, it's been unbelievable. Mr. Ward says he hopes the donations to Dominica will keep going as the island will need assistance for years to come. As it relates to the effects of Hurricane Maria, they are still being felt locally. The passage of the hurricane caused serious delays with importing items as ships are understandably being diverted to other islands in dire need of supplies. Lisa Lord, CBC News. Thanks, Lisa. Well, fresh off the lifting of the ban on poultry products from the UK, the Barbados Agricultural Society is cautioning the Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation about the reckless importation of chicken. Chief Executive Officer James Paul does not want to see a case where chicken is imported in a manner that is detrimental to local, local poultry producers. He says the BAS still has concerns with respect to imported poultry. Mr. Paul is confident the industry can supply all the chicken that is needed. We will hope that the, the BADMC does not rush back inside there 
and seek to bring in more than the current quantities, first of all, of poultry that is currently coming in. Uh, because we think that the, the local poultry producers can adequately handle the market for poultry, and therefore we do not think that there's any need to import poultry above the, the, the current amounts. Mr. Paul was speaking at a press briefing to announce plans for an upcoming annual General Assembly with members next Saturday at the Radisson Aquatica. A number of issues vital to the sector will be addressed. There are some issues that will be attended at that annual General Assembly, which of course we think will be of strategic importance to farmers and in terms of the direction of the agriculture sector in Barbados in general. Um, we think that at this point in time, where the, the economy is going through the issues that it does have, um, that there's an opportunity, a very real opportunity, to grow major facets of the industry. In other news, at a time when some young people are going astray, programs that positively affect them need to be highlighted. One such initiative is the Cave Shepherd, Berger Paints, Kentucky Fried Chicken National School Awards, which, led by founder Ricardo Marshall, continues to expand annually. In fact, this year, for the first time, it will, be, it, will, it will include secondary schools. Speaking at the launch of the 2017 to 2018 edition, acting president of the Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, Juanita Wade, says this year's program is timely and necessary. At a time when our young people are facing an uncertain future, where an inability or reluctance to solve conflict and a lack of respect for life are taking center stage, where disaffected young people feel that, feel that the education system is not reaching everyone, where students leave school without adequate certification and girls are especially being accused of being too aggressive, the National Schools Award Initiative has come along to respond in some measure to some of these inadequacies. The National School Awards allow students to showcase their skills in literary arts, deportment, visual arts, sports and culinary arts. But a major part of this year's award program is the Tree of Hope. Much like the Trident during the 50th anniversary celebrations, this tree will be transported to various schools across the island, giving students the opportunity to add one word that their peers can aspire to. Speaking to a number of primary school students during the launch was Assistant Director of the National Sports Council. She's encouraging young people to be more appreciative of the sacrifices made to aid in their success. This list of sponsors behind me have put time and effort and money and making this project work, and it is for you. Nobody else may have done anything for you before, but all of these have got together to make this project work for you, led by Mr. Marshall. I want you to give him a round of applause. I want you also to appreciate what adults do for you the time, the effort they take to plan and execute things for you. I want you to appreciate that. In other news, General Manager of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, Doug Hoyt, is offering an apology to Barbados Workers Union members following a seven-day impasse which led to a seven-day walkout by staff members. In a press statement, Mr. Hoyt said an agreement regarding the payment of increments was initially reached but there was a genuine misunderstanding about the terms and conditions of payment. However, following 10 hours of talks between the two parties, chaired by Senator Harcourt Husbands, the sides have agreed to meet tomorrow to fully resolve the outstanding differences. Well, we take a pause here, but we'll have more news after the break. Celebrate and save this back to school with Bico. Enjoy Bico Double Delight French Vanilla 1 Liter Ice Cream, now only $19.95 fat inclusive. Barbados' best selling French Vanilla Ice Cream for a limited time only at the unbeatable price of $19.95 fat inclusive. This offer available from participating outlets island wide. Bico Mobilers and the Bico Direct Outlet on Harbor Road. Do you want audience numbers? Over 140,000 people are watching Morning Barbados and the Evening News. Six out of ten top radio personalities are found right here at the CBC. CBC delivers the audience you need. 
Help support the restoration efforts for the hundreds of thousands affected by catastrophic hurricanes. Donate to the Red Cross Hurricane Relief Account at any branch of the following. CIBC First Caribbean, account number 1001163436. First Citizens, 500-900-00588. RBC Royal Bank, 2100573. And Republic Bank, 018041531001. Money's raised will be sent to the International Red Cross for its restoration work for affected persons. Appeal closes 30th November 2017. Persons wishing to post checks should make these out to Red Cross Hurricane Relief Appeal Account and post to Barbados Red Cross Society, PO Box 300 Bridgetown or hand deliver to the Red Cross Warren's headquarters. The Barbados Red Cross and Commercial Banks on behalf of the victims of catastrophic hurricanes thank all persons and businesses for their contributions. We listened to what you had to say and tore up the old rules because losing what you paid for is just wrong. Now lost data and talk are a thing of the past. Only Digicel gives you unlimited rollover data and talk. Just buy and renew your quick pick bundle before it expires and keep what's rightfully yours. Never lose what you don't use. Go to my Digicel app to bundle up and roll over today. Digicel. Welcome back. Well, CIBC First Caribbean stepped up to the hurricane relief efforts plate in a major way today at its Warren's headquarters, handing over a check to regional airline Liat to cover the cost of several relief, relief flights. The carrier has been integral to the region's response to the flurry of devastating hurricanes that have made landfall on several Caribbean islands recently. CIBC First Caribbean Director of Corporate Communications, Deborah King, says the bank's efforts to go far beyond funding relief flights. She says a total of 550,000 U.S. dollars has been donated to support Hurricane Irma humanitarian relief and rebuilding efforts. We have felt the impact. We have seen it. We've seen the pictures. We are Caribbean people. Uh, we are citizens of the Caribbean. We are a, a corporate citizen. So it, it was a, a basically a no-brainer for the trustees of our foundation to be able to commit this. And also our parent, CIBC, who came on board. And together, we have committed 550000 U.S. dollars um, towards relief, quite apart from what we've done for our staff uh, and their families. And Liat CEO Julie Reefer jones says the donation was timely. That has been conducting relief efforts uh, since the passage of the storms, which has devastated quite a few of the territories in our network. Um, these flights were largely unfunded, and we reached out to a number of corporate entities to see whether we could get some support for the flights. We continue to do those flights, and in particular in relation to Dominica, we are doing flights from Barbados to Dominica daily, and we are doing about four or five flights a week from Antigua. A lot of this activity is coordinated with the relief organizations in those territories, but we continue to do them as part of our contribution to the region. Another Barbadian has joined the ranks of the centenarians. This time it's Violet Ernesta Gaskin, who celebrated today, surrounded by family and friends in Thorpe St. James. Miss Gaskin, affectionately, no, affectionately known as Grand Grand to those assembled, was toasted by Acting Governor General Sir Philip Graves. Also on hand for the festivities was St. James South MP Donville Innes, who, who highlighted Miss Gaskin's contribution to the community. Miss Gaskin was all smiles as she enjoyed the outpouring of love from her well-wishers, which included two of her three surviving children. The grandmother of 16 and great-grandmother of many says in hard times, her faith and strong will got her through. It was hard, rough and tough, I must tell you, but I was trying to bear it and instead of sitting down and crying, I get up and try. So that is all I could tell you. When the, the hardness comes, you try and bear it and you pray to God, call me again, do you ain't going to kill yourself. You're trying to satisfy us, and sometimes it will be hard, and sometimes get it soft, and give God praise and thanks, and I reach here today. So I'm very grateful and thankful for that. 
So you all must do the same thing. Be thankful how a life come and we'll make it to the hundred or more. True words, and we also wish her a very happy birthday. But still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. Honey, this kitchen needs painting. Why not the whole house? We, we hit in the, the jackpot, jackpot at Berger Paints. Enter to win free paint in one of seven prizes. In the Anti McCall Lucky 7 Jackpot, worth $140,000. Just spend $100 at Brighton Stokes, Brightness Express, and Stationery. Brightness Insurance Standard, MQI, Berger Paints, or Consolidated Finance. Enter your code online at www.answerlucky7jackpot.com for your chance to win. See website for full details. The Salvation Army Barbados Division takes this time to appeal to all Barbadians to support this effort to help our Caribbean brothers and sisters in Dominica, who are desperately in need of the following items. Canned foods and other non-perishable foods, bottled water, pampers, children and adults, children educational material, bed cots. These items can be donated to the Salvation Army at their other institutions across Barbados or call 426-2467 or 228-1361 and arrangements will be made to collect these donations. Please note no clothing necessary. We also welcome any monetary donations to this effort through our local account at Scotiabank, account number 0009019858. The Salvation Army Appeal. This year, Quartz is saying thank you to all of our shoppers. We have enjoyed serving you through the years, and we take this time to thank you for choosing us. As always at Quartz, we have you in mind with great offers, gifts, and prizes in store for you this season. For your chance to enter the Quartz Thank You Sweepstakes, just spend $799 and over. As we look to the future, we promise to give you exceptional service and great products at the best prices. Quartz, bringing value home. Home. Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt is optimistic the country will receive help from the international community to rebuild after Hurricane Maria. While acknowledging the help would not come overnight, he thanked partners like the Pan American Health Organization that have been helping Dominica after the hurricane lashed the island. We have not earned one dollar in the treasury since the hurricane, but we have bills to pay. And these bills are coming up every day. And, and, and so one can appreciate the fiscal difficulties which this government will have to face, the country will have to face in the weeks and months ahead. Because if before the hurricane you had, as a small country, fiscal challenges, it is not now that you are unable to earn that you won't have fiscal challenges. So let us... Um, be grateful to the Lord that we, we, we have seen another day and that there are people uh, like Paho and all of the major benefactors who have been assisting us in, in, um, in, in addressing our concerns. And Mr. Scarrett also announced that the curfew hours will be reviewed. And the new uh, curfew hours effective today will be set at from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. So 6 p.m. Uh, to 6 a.m. in the morning, that will allow uh, folks to get to work on time um, or even before time and um, allow you to get home um, uh, safely and, and, uh, and adequately. And of course, these um, times are being reviewed because by and large, uh, most people are behaving themselves. Meanwhile, Dominica reportedly lost all of its vaccines in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. According to the director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, the vaccines were rendered unusable when power was knocked out across the island. PAHO is working to help Dominica to replace the supplies. The cold chain was interrupted um, because of loss of electricity in all of the facilities. Um, therefore, all of the vaccines are not usable. So PAHO is, we are working um, now to um, develop a, a, a project for the funding of vaccines for the country for a year and to um, look into and assess the cold chain and ensure that there is cold chain and cold chain refrigerators and vaccine carriers, etc. U.S.-based oil giant ExxonMobil Corporation 
says it has made a fifth new oil discovery after drilling the Turbot One well offshore Guyana. Turbot is ExxonMobil's latest discovery to date in Guyana, adding to previous discoveries at Lisa, Payara, Snoik, and Lisa Deep. President of ExxonMobil Exploration Company, Steve Greenlee, says the results from this latest well further illustrate the tremendous potential of exploration activities offshore Guyana. And the Organization of American States, or OAS, says it will collaborate with Amazon Web Services, a subsidiary of U.S. company Amazon, to help the Caribbean strengthen its cyber response capacity, this while improving its regulatory framework on issues related to digital security. During the signing ceremony at OAOS headquarters on Wednesday, OAS Secretary General Luis Almagaro said that the agreement will allow the two organizations to work on crucial topics such as securing the cloud and how to protect public data. The OAS says the initiative will be implemented through the cybersecurity program of the OAS Inter-American Committee Against Terrorism. And the United States Department of Justice says a retired U.S. Army colonel has been indicted for his alleged role in a foreign bribery and money laundering scheme. This is in connection with a planned U.S. $84 million port development project in Haiti. The DOJ says 64-year-old Joseph Baptiste of Fulton in Maryland was charged yesterday with one count of cons conspiracy to violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and the Travel Act, one count of violating the Travel Act, and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering in an indictment filed in the District of Massachusetts. The indictment alleges that Baptiste solicited bribes from undercover FBI agents in Boston who pose as potential investors in connection with a proposed project to develop a port in the Mole St. Nicholas area of Haiti. According to the indictment, the proposed project was expected to cost about US $84 million and was to involve the construction of a cement factory in its first phase. Well, Sports News is next with Mark Seal, but first, a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. An insurance policy is a legal document that defines the losses that are or are not covered, as well as the rights and responsibilities of the insurance company and the insured. Cooperators General Insurance, ensuring you are protected during this hurricane season. Uh,